Hi, I'm Daisha Seifer, and I'm going to briefly demonstrate the hand calculations for a paired samples t-test. As you can see, I have the formula for a paired samples t-test displayed on the screen as a part of the Grove and Seifer third edition workbook. The formula for a paired samples t-test is the mean difference divided by the standard error of the difference, where specifically the numerator is the mean difference of the paired scores and the, denom the denominator is the standard error of that difference. Now the numerator is easy to compute if you arrange your data in columns like the example on page uh, 398, table 32.1. For this example, we have 10 participants who have esophageal impedance values at baseline and then at two-week follow-up. And then you'll need a third column, which is the different scores. And that represents one column subtracted from the other. It doesn't matter if you subtract column one from two or two from one. You'll get the same exact values in this third column, but your sign will be different. That just means that your final T value will be exactly the same, whether it's negative or positive. As we know, it is the absolute value of the T that determines its statistical significance. So the formula for the standard error of the difference, the denominator, is tricky for students because it involves computing a standard deviation. So the numerator for the standard error of the difference is the standard deviation of the different scores. And the denominator is the square root of n. So I have employed Excel as my trusty calculator to help us with the hand calculations. So I have carried over thir table 32-1 here where we have baseline esophageal impedance, follow-up esophageal impedance, and the different scores just like you see in the book. Now to, we need to get the standard error of the difference, we need to compute the standard deviation of these 10 values. So this is how we do it. We already need to compute the mean of these 10 values for the numerator of our t. So it turns out the numerator of our t, which is the mean difference, ends up being 1162.9. We need to subtract that from each and every one of these values. So I've built an additional column, which is simply subtracting the mean from every single value here. So 1476 minus 1162.9 is 313.1 and so forth and so on all the way down. Then the last column I needed to build is to square each of these values. So 313.1 squared is 98,031.61 and so forth and so on all the way down. The next part of obtaining a standard deviation is summing these values. So this value 4,995,908.9, that is the sum of these 10 values. And then the denominator of a standard deviation is n minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. So I, I take this value, divide by 9, and then finally I can't forget to take the square root. This value divided by 9 is the variance. To get the standard deviation, I have to take the square root. And that is 745.05. Sure enough, that is provided here. And so on the next page, you see those values inserted into the t-test formula. Here, this value should look familiar. Divided by 10 minus 1, the standard deviation of the different scores is 745.05. All right. Plug that in as the numerator of the standard error formula. The denominator is the square root of 10. Solve for the standard error, and that is 235.78. Now we're ready to solve for the t. We know that our numerator is the mean difference, which is 1,162.9. Denominator, we have discovered, is 235.78, giving us a final t-test value of 4.93. You know you computed these calculations correctly if you go to the SPSS output and you find those values in the output. So if we scroll down, here's the paired samples t-test output. The mean here is the numerator, 1162.9. 
there's that standard deviation we calculated. And here's the denominator of the t, 235.61. This value divided by this value equals our t value. Hope this helps.